bad here, and if I'm not on ATR, I'm listening to ATR, so have a think about that. 98, the touchline ramp, we are back from the elation of the Homeless World Cup. This week we're joined by Gareth of the Captain Variety. He is back, making his glorious return. And this week we are going to... <laughs> Then. This week we're going to re-meet Gareth. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're also going to talk Premier League uh, fixtures. They're coming up. Mm -hmm. This mm. back football is back. Premier League mm -hmm. football is here. We're going to have a transfer window roundup because there's been quite a lot going on this week. The bulk of this podcast will be us making our Premier League predictions. All three of us have had homework. We are going to do <laughs> our predictions. Maybe a few other things. No other things. Do not do it to me. Right. Um, shall I just play the music? Play the music. Gareth, we would like you to just briefly explain who you are and what you do for our listeners. I have no idea, most of the time. <laughs> I So we have a company called Town Square and we help people start businesses. So we do that with things like our startup clubs and all of these different things. But yeah. my main interest is trying to find a way to get people to do things they care about. That's yeah. really what our spaces are for. So we've got a couple of spaces now. Um, and we just like to work with people who, you know, they hate what they do. They know they can do more. Um, yeah. And we just try and help them find a way to do that. Unlocking that potential. You know? So that's, that's as concise as I could have. There it is. Right. Prediction time. Prediction oh. time. This is what I've been looking forward to. When this I... is why you're on. We've saved this I time for you. I am not looking forward to this. <laughs> because <laughs> I know that it is going to make me look like the ultimate idiot. This is my... We've done this now. Moment. This is the third prediction episode we've done. And they are always good to look back on. Uh, last season, I predicted that Lukaku would be top goal scorer. <laughs> Could have been so. Yeah, yeah. In another year. We'll, we'll listen back to Could those. That's the luck I, of the draw. Well, I cannot tell you how much Mitch laughed on our voice chats that we have back and forth with him. He was like, I forgot he picked Lukaku. <laughs> he was like, brilliant. And, and so who's going to be this year's Lukaku? Right, so. Who's top of the pot? I'm going to start with the <laughs> first category. And I just need the name of the team. Who is going to win the Premier League this season? Obviously, Gareth. sadly, City. Okay. Uh, Pep's got another year in it, dependent on if he wants. Wow. Dependent if he wants to channel in on the Champions League, because if that is the case, he's considering that. Obviously, he's going to go for the for the league, but I just want to know where they're yeah. more geared towards. But Pep, there's another Pep, spec there, isn't there? Pep's right. so got another year. In so it. you say City, yeah? Absolutely. That was a long word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Liverpool. I'm going to say Liverpool will okay. win. This year, I think they're going to kick on. They impressed me that Adrian a lot. goal as well for a backup. Superb. Super. Yeah. Very That's good. brilliant signing. Um, more on That's that in a minute. Right, goal can I give you... Goalkeeper signings. Now, can okay. I... Okay. You need to tell me the top four. <clears throat> Liverpool, Arsenal, Spurs. I think Arsenal's business has been good enough. Okay, so you're saying <clears throat> Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs yeah. to join City, yeah? Yeah. Alex, who are you saying? I am saying Liverpool, Arsenal and Chelsea. Okay. Do you know who I'm saying? I'm saying City, because I think Liverpool will win. I think Spurs, which is the first time I predict this Spurs to stay in the top four. And I think fourth will be United. Now, I also you are win. so hopeful, but I'm yeah. glad I like your enthusiasm. Do you know, totally. why, I do you know why I always... Do this is because, like I say a million times, if Man United were playing non league football, I would still support them and love them just as much. So I don't care if we finish sixth and do it with young players, brilliant. I'm still going to support you. What if we finish Plus, sixth for right. all players? Yeah. Relegated teams Gareth, Newcastle, Palace, Villa. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that is. I thought that might be the one. Right, this is. I like that. Who are you saying is going to get relegated? Newcastle. Palace. Yeah. Sheffield United. Yeah. And I'm going to say Brighton. And Brighton Potter is going down, mm. according to Alex. I'm looking mm. forward to this. Right, my predictions are Sheffield United, Norwich, Ooh. and Newcastle. Okay. Mm. Fair. So officially Newcastle are... Newcastle are done. Yeah. Yeah. So we've all predicted Newcastle. And two of us I don't want it to happen. I don't want it to happen. Right. Golden Boot. Who's going to be top goal scorer? Mane. 
Mane is a shout. I like oh, it. I think Aguero yeah. because I think this will be his last season. This is the one. I think this will be the one. I think Salah is going to do it again. Okay. I think so. We've said Mane, Aguero, and no Salah. No Aubameyangers? No Aubameyangers. We're Aubameyang less. That's what we are. I think Laka's going to play. Do you think more Laka is a role? Okay, this year. assists. So I, 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 I probably shouldn't do this. Maybe I should, I should bank on one Trent. Um, okay. But I was gonna say I thought Bernardo Silva was gonna play a bit of a different role this this season. Okay. Yeah. But Trent's gonna be my Alex. I think. Who's gonna get the most I assists? I said Salah because Salah? I know he finishes, but I think he he can maybe mix it up and create a bit more. For okay. Alex and Manning. I'm gonna say Raheem Sterling. He needs to have a Big bigger season up. than last season. He, I'm gonna say Raheem he, Sterling. He did wonders last season. He did, my but he. Ne- I think he's gonna have a better one. I really do. Okay. They played him as a false nine on the weekend. <laughs> that is scary. If they can, if they can play Sterling with his pace at Justifies false nine. Justifies his twelve million oh, rating right. on fantasy. Clean sheets. I've gone a little bit safe again with Edison here. I've also gone Edison, but I could talk goalkeepers for an entire no, episode. I know, but we've got enough wormholes. I'm going to say Alisson. <laughs> Alisson is going to win. Right, here is the one I'm looking forward to. Who is going to be the best sign-in? Do I have to just pick one? You I can think give, you, right, can, you, you can, can give honourable, honourable mentions. mentions. Okay, yes, honourable mentions. Ken, yeah. Wells. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. Heaton is the astute signing. I think he'll slot straight Heaton in. Is I think it's a good shot. price. I, I think, think he's got experience. Promote team. But who is your best? Heaton. Heaton. Heaton is your best yeah. friend. Yeah. Super. Heaton. This is, what I like about this one is it's interesting because you can look at them from many different angles. First of all, who's going to be your best lineup? Master Keen. Because he's exactly yeah. what uh, Everton require. Moise Keen. For a great price. Keen and he's going to be family. He's okay. going to he's, he's gonna be in there because he feels loved and he's got an arm around him. Okay. Mine is Rodri. I think Rodri's going to have mm. a big impact on the In the Jorginho role at Man City. In the Fernandinho, where Fernandinho is. Man City last season were brilliant, but they did play worse when Fernandinho wasn't on the pitch. He can't do it for much longer. But everyone knew this. Pep knew this. And he just went, Rodri's got a release clause. Go and pay it. And they went, all right. Yeah. Because uh, it's, Fernandinho it's a great was a revelation. Can I give some honourable mentions yes. uh, for Sha- players I think are great signings Adrian is on there because mm-hmm. I think astute getting 8 million for Mignolet and getting Adrian Incredible. on a free is crazy it's perfect Adrian uh, underrated I right. Domble I think is going to be a very good Dombley signing will be strong. Nicolas Pe- Pepe I think is going to be an extremely good signing let's, I think let's really hope Hall- he's not an arch of it right Haller oh, yeah. at West Ham I think is going to be a good signing yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a very good striker. I've watched him a lot. He's very, very good. And I, think, team. Everything and I think Wan Bazaka. I think Wan Bazaka will turn out to be an extremely good signing by Man United. What over the over the course of course of the season? So we'll see. We'll That's see. Random man. Aaron Wan Bazaka, I think, is going to be one of the biggest. Re- we have needed a right back since uh, what, before, Gary, Neville. Gary Neville because mm-hmm. Wes Brown was good, but he wasn't a right back since Antonio Valencia. So he was not good as a right. He was good as a right winger. Next category, right worst signing. Worst signing. So apart from Heaton, I want yep. to put all of the rest of Villa's okay. activity. <laughs> I think it is. You're putting the entire Villa team. The entire is that Villa ta- Worst is. signing. Put it down. Villa. Villa team. Okay, I've got I've got a similar one. Go on then. Mine is West Ham. Any. West. Any. They're all going to be failures. They're all going to just not live up to the expectation because that's exactly what West Ham does. Last season, he predicted West Ham would get relegated. They just about Why are you picking them? on West Ham? I hope I'm you go saying... now for Burnley just for the whole claret. And no, uh, my <laughs> worst signing is Joe Linton from Newcastle, for Newcastle United. He actually has got an extremely poor goal record to be given the number nine shirt and paid a lot of money. Harsh. It strikes me that Mike Ashley has gone, he's Brazilian and he's young. It's possible that if I spend forty million on him now, I'll be able to sell him for eighty million the way the market's going in two years' time. I literally think that's all they've done. Yeah, that you know that's all they've right. done. Right, because it's that transparent. First manager to leave. Oh, I'm gonna upset some folks, Graham Potter. I don't oh. think I love what he stands for. I don't think Premier League has the patience. Okay, right, fair enough. Alex, who's the first manager to leave? Ole. Oh, Ole. Ole, Ole. Uh, I had two answers to this. One of them was Solskjaer. <laughs> One of them was Solskjaer. But I think Uncle Roy Hodgson. No. Yes, that's a good shout. How dare you? No. I think Uncle Roy Hodgson will How be the first manager. And no one went Bruce. 
No, no because, because I it's think... too obvious. I went Xavi Garcia and just in case the because the only people who don't obvious. like Bruce as a signing are the fans. They, Mike Ashley mm. loves it. Right, next one. We got it. This is going too long. Wolves, Everton. This last one now. <laughs> Wolves, Everton, and Leicester. Mm-hmm. Who will, in what order will they finish? So I'm not saying they have to. You have to say 12th, 13th, and 16th. Who will finish highest out of those three? And in what order will Half they finish? Future. I have agonised over this. I think it's going to go Wolves, Everton, Leicester. Wow. Okay. Do you know I'm going to go with? I'm going to go Everton, Leicester, Wolves, then United. Okay. Hang oh. on. Right. So stop. <laughs> hang on. Right. So yours Wolves, were Wolves, Everton, Leicester. Ev, yours were... Mine were Everton, Leicester, Wolves, and United. Leicester, Wolves. Look at that. Right, ours... My, sorry, ours. Mine, I think Leicester will finish higher. And I think... Because of Brendan. And I think Wolves will finish in the middle, and I think Everton will finish at the bottom, which incredibly means that the three of us have all picked the only three... Op- like, each different option. Huh. You have picked Wolves to finish top above them. He's picked Everton. I've picked Leicester. Then you've said Everton. He said Leicester. I've said Wolves. Leicester, Wolves, Everton. So we've all picked the only option, like the three options available to us. One of each. So we don't agree on anything in that section. But th- we will look back on these once and the love. Premier League has ended. I don't think I'll be on that show because I think... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll take a picture of these and we'll see how I feel halfway through. Right, yeah. So we'll, we'll look back in a year's time. This will be fun. Bruce and the situation, the challenge I think is you look at Twitter and no matter what happens, everyone complains about everything. You look at all of the players Arsenal being linked with, everyone is being criticised. It's becoming so difficult, I think, for clubs to understand what fans really want. That when Ashley came out and had no idea that fans were against Bruce, no idea whatsoever, he was completely shocked when fans were, were in uproar. And I think this is part of the oh. challenge, right? Is that yeah. with every like for, as a as a regular fan, you can see completely why Newcastle fans feel that way. Yeah. The, every signing that you see on Twitter now is being slated and slammed. No matter and who's use, signing, who. and if they use that as research or yeah. feedback, how do they learn? How can yeah? How yeah. can they do that? Because it's not a level playing field, especially online, as right. we know. Like is that those Vicious. figures and those those comments, are they truly real? Because people feel comfortable in saying that, or do they just want to perpetuate negativity? Which one is it? Because I, I struggle with knowing that when people use comments, is it their subconscious? Is it their true self? Or is it them being spiteful? Super just to deep. get a reaction and Super just deep. to get... Right. What is the most heartbreaking thing about young Brazilian players, flair players who come through, that yeah. you just cannot wait for them to get to their peak? And it never happens. Even, and I dare say it, Ronaldinho never quite reached that point. Oh, Ronaldinho is still iconic, though. He's oh. iconic, but... He could have been... He could have been much better. Kaká could have been one of the best players to ever play the game. However, he was... Ve- he was he's not Messi-Ronaldo level. Um, he is... Or Zinedine Zidane level. That's like who I put on par. He would be the one underneath that. The dead fed. Yes. That is when they're all stood on the terraces. The slogan was, Become the Stripes. So when they're on the terrace, all wearing the new Juventus shirt... When they stand, ne- when you stand next to another Juventus fan, you form black and white stripes. So Are it you was. A fan aimed... of that now? I quite like that idea. The it's shirts amazing. are horrendous. It's an amazing idea. It's an amazing idea as a collective, and it's sort of like an art piece almost it on the is. terraces. That's it's a, it's a, it's an art installation in a, in a, in a football stadium. If you don't appreciate <laughs> the Juventus crest, then there's a chance you're not going to appreciate the kit. I think yeah. if you appreciate mm. the crest and what they're trying to do through design. Yeah, different game. I think it's it's how you wear it. It's not the garment. You need to own okay, it. Okay, right. That's the most rambly outro we've ever had. We are a Touchline Rant. We are at a Touchline Rant on Twitter. We are at a Touchline Rant on Instagram, on Facebook, YouTube. Search a Touchline Rant. Just, you know the name. That's, that's us done for a week. That's, Thank you, that's, Gary. That's hash. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>